why. All right? All right. So, a lot of pitchers in this group, is typical. Here's the mound, here's the push up, foot, hard, and then here's the landing foot, hard, goes to the glove side. Okay? All right? So, so if they fail, you know, they fail. They're not straight. Okay? If you try to do what the pros do, whatever, the best they will do, cross, okay? And if even if you can't do it, you know what you are? If you can't do it, you're at least straight. And straight is better than it were, you were before. So it's risk-free to try. You, you understand that? Right. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Okay? Right? So I'm going to pull down this power line, this way, right? And, and um, you have your um, marks when you pitch here, here, or sorry, here and here. My marks are here and here. Okay, all right? All right. So, you know, if I, you were there, and I threw you a rope, we play tug of war. You want one more? Okay, it's a dog example, but you play alone. And you play tug of war. Are you going to play from pitching stance, which a lot of you have, or are you going to play like this, tug of war? I want you, the next time it goes up, you the try second. to get up Right, you're not going to open up your body and play tug of war. You get me. You're going to close your body and play tug of war. Okay, if you hit a punching bag, just to stand there, and you hit it from an open stance or a closed stance, you're going to have, yes, you're going to hit it hard. So pull a rope, pin a punching bag, or throw the ball. The angles make you more sufficient and more leverage. Okay? Alright? Okay? Alright. So now, that's why. Even if you try to do it, and it's new, so it's gonna be weird. Yeah, anyway. And if you can't do it, okay? Alright? At least you're straight. And straighter is better than the weak side. Right. So it's risk free to try. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to show you a few, and you're going to go. Uh, now there's like four drills to work on this. We're not going to get them all done. Okay? All right. It's a simple warm up. Okay? So, yeah, you guys can decide who's catching me. They'll go play. I got you, I got you. You got it? You want that ball back? Is that the same ball? Just stand up and catch. You know what I mean? Okay, price okay. man. Okay. But I'm doing lazy warm-up sets. Now, when I had a drag to it, I cross it less. That makes sense? Right. When I add a drag to it, I cross it less. Right. So in warm-up, and this is no time to explain, warm-up, every world-class pitcher is more over, and the faster they go, they work their way back. They never go to the glove side, and the faster they go, where they work the way the way to the center. Yep. Okay? All right, so now, the basic drill we do is we scrape a line in the dirt. It's better if you use a rope on the ground, but we don't have plenty of ropes. So a rope on the ground, okay, all right, 
and we do this thing we call sister walks. I'm going to use the white line. Okay. I'm going to straddle the line. Left foot over, right foot over, left foot over. So the line, okay, is not the power line. It's a rope or a line that I cross. Okay. Cross, cross, cross. Okay. All right. Cross, cross, cross. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Now, there's faster versions of it that we don't have time to do. Okay. It's not off the line. You scrape in the line with dirt. You cross, cross, cross. Because this is an overcorrective drill. All right. Why is it overcorrective? Because if you do it half speed, overcorrective you have a chance when you go full speed. Doug, one second. Hey, yeah. catchers, if you haven't hit, why don't you guys go hit? We're going to let the, the dads hit. So anyone that's, that needs to hit, go hit. Okay. So, okay. so. If you need to hit, go hit. You step in the left of the line. Okay? All right? Okay. So we're overcorrecting. So when we go full speed, we have a chance of stepping up. Make your report to the other pitchers and cut out the side of the pitches. Okay, because this is better, so these get worse. The, the vertical pitches get worse, and all of a sudden, she pulls the plug at her pitching coach. She's quick left and right. College player of the year, national championship. That's it. Because if the better you get at these pitches, the worse these pitches. And these pitches get people out. They get people out because you've been the court, but it's wrong. Okay? Because certain pitches complement each other more than that. Yeah. Certain pitches compete with each other, which means the better one gets, the worse the other one gets. Now, if I'm running and fielding a backhand, and that's 5% about stuff on pitches that pretty much people don't realize. Is that good? Quality, not quantity. Vertical, not horizontal. Okay? All right? Yep. And um, good job. Oh, yeah. I know. I'll tell you the last thing. Okay. World class pitchers do the strain stride and every pitch. So, feel good with your left foot. Cross. Here for the rise, here for the drop, here for the screwball, here for the curveball. Uh uh, you're not a circus act. Uh huh. And you're going to hear that. Okay. okay. Now, when world class pitchers do a stride adjustment, Stride shorter on the drop, long and run. They're talking an inch or less. Yeah, nobody has multiple footprints when they pitch. Who is world class? Right? Because, because if you manipulate your stride in different directions, the first thing that goes is velocity. Right? When you maximize your lower body stride and have your one rhythmic bending point, you feel harder, you feel better and your spins coming in that motion, Good. disguising nice it better the pitcher, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you see that step behind you? You will hear okay. many things so in your pitching program that are hard. Okay. You know, you heard it somewhere. You go to camp or a lesson. Oh yeah, this pitch we start over here. This pitch we go over here. Right. And it's actually not. Good. Nice Got it? All the pitches versus quantity. Okay. Okay. Got it? Think about that in a car ride home. There you go. Is that easier? Nice together. job. Yeah, and then we overcorrect the power line Good. so you have a chance to go hard. Got it? All right. So think one. about that. Make better decisions. Sorry. Nice. Okay. There you go. If you don't hit, you stay here. If you hit, you go over there. It's not how to pitch. What are they? Absolutely. Okay, you got one. Sorry. Uh, it's Okay, absolutes are the things we have to do to be good. 
styles are the way you get them done. Okay? If you're working a style thing and you don't like it, you change it. If you're going on an absolute thing and you don't like it, too bad, you still work on it. Right. And I, I didn't have time for this in the first scoop. I know you know this. I'm just not quizzing you, right? I'm telling you, this is funny. For a small group, it's a funny story. What's two plus two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's two plus two when you're mad? Mm -hmm. What's two plus two when you're happy? What's two plus two in West Virginia? Still <laughs> going. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I should have picked a different state. Um, and, right, right. And you would not believe it's funny. And I, I have a sports psychologist friend too, and he did this. P pictures your age or younger. And I kind of yell at him, What's two plus two when you're mad? And they go, I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. So two plus two is an absolute. So man, whether I yell at you or not, you're mad or angry. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of thing it is, right? And sometimes, okay. Sometimes you feel fresh in the game. You're starting to play. And sometimes you're throwing three games a day, and you're beat. And you're starting to shoulder to get your own. Well, this is tough. So styles have to fit you, but you have to fit the absolutes. Pitcher's DNA is something all to get a different. But pitcher's DNA is like certain builds, certain body types have. Who's good, by the, you know, but good, by the way. Okay. And all of a sudden, the release point comes from out here, and they get a really good rise. And all of a sudden, swing and miss, swing and miss. Because we haven't seen it come from eight inches lower and rise that much. So that's the thing. Now, taller pitchers have different, you know, more leverage and this and that. So there's certain strengths and advantage to be okay. Got it? And that equates to every pitcher is different. So if you teach every pitcher the same way, we'll still come out the end product will still be different. Yeah. All right. Next sense. So pitching is not you do whatever you want, and every style is good. All right. That's not true. And it's also not you do everything the same. Yeah. You do. Some things the same, and some things individual. I know that's a basic comment, but you should see how many coaches don't realize that. Because coaches all the time realize, I like to teach us that way, a style thing. Um, they like to teach a certain wind-up, okay? Wind-up's a style thing. But they like to teach that wind-up, so they think in their brain it's an absolute thing, it's not. They're just good at teaching that style of wind-up, so they think it's an absolute fundamental, but it's not. They think it's two plus two, but it's not. That makes sense? Okay. So, um, so, now, um, so, um, um, you're going to just start throwing. Let me see what happens. This is going to be a giant lesson, because we just got a 40 minutes of support. So. Uh, you two are going to continue on scissor walks, but it's two-step scissor walks. You know, you know reason why we're doing Two-step scissor walks, you make this stride a little longer. Okay? A little longer. Okay? But not full speed. There you go. Okay? And two steps, not three. You're right. So you're going right, left. But it's not Lee's baby steps. It's medium steps, like... Right, left, medium. Got it? Yeah, so the angle would be less. You know what I mean? This is like three steps, two steps, one step. Does that make sense to you? Right, and now you're on two. Okay? You just warm up and you throw and we'll see your hands. I'm going to 
show her three steps of the walk because your stride angle okay. is a little bit to the left. Uh, your wrist step's good, your balance is good. See, see the walk is like a... So, um, so I'm going to show her three steps, but I'm going to show you one. Okay, now, you have to visualize the, you know, the rope. You know what I mean? All right, so, so visualize there's this, like, rope on the outside of your foot. Outside, like in here, straight forward. And you go here and do your wind up as you way you go, like like you do. And then hard, okay, and then cross. Good. You don't have to cross it by a lot, okay? But you have to cross it by a little bit, okay? If you want to do it in the fence, do it in the fence. You know what I mean? You get five feet in the fence and do it in the fence. That pretty much is maybe preferred. You know what I mean? But I'm because not, because when I stand up, you know, I'm in that new. same position I was. That makes sense? Okay. Okay, so, in, right, so it's one step scissor this, walks with this wind up. one time that you actually want to run over your head for good. Yeah. Um, kind of want to yeah. run over your head. Overcorrect so, right away. transfer lower, and okay. you have that down path. So okay. when you overcorrect the stride line. Your gets tiny, gets off, if you transfer you know, too you high. You have, right, okay. you've heard about People will think it is. But most people right? step to the Good. big side of the car line. And you too. Which okay. means you, you don't step to the catcher, you step to the glove side, your glove side. Good. Which is 85% nice of most people. Nice job. Okay. So when you get it, um, um, all right, so when you do this, okay? There we go. Good. If you overcorrect the power line at half speed, overcorrect at half speed, you get a chance at going straighter at full speed. So this drill is risk free, okay? If you overcorrect it and then you go faster, you have a chance at going straight and not to the weak side. So the second thing I'm going to give, I'm going to give the first group, right, is. Some of the world-class pitchers are not even on the power line. Not, oh, you almost and had you it. never hear that at games and clinics. Meaning, Cat Osman or Monica Abbott and Cat Osman are both six to nine good, inches good. over the power line. Good. They're left hand. Okay, all right. So that means if I pitch to you, and that's they don't step straight at you. They step to the arm side. They step the opposite of most people. Meaning, your stride alignment is this. Their stride alignment is like that. Okay, so if I threw you a rope and we play tug of war, got it? We play tug of war. Are you going to play on this position? Nice job. That? There you go. That one, right? Because you can have more leverage. Good. Right, because there's more nice. torque, there's more angles, and you can throw the ball harder. Got it? All right. Um, so, um, so when you do this, okay, all right, um, that's why people do that. They stride over the power line because you got the leverage on the back, but it's harder. Okay? So I always tell younger pitchers, and if it's, I know it's a dorky statement, but you try to stride the best pitch in the world, or you try to stride like the pros you can, at least you're straight. And straight is better than where you were. So by default, we get better. That makes sense? Yeah, even if you can't do it, you're going to do something better than you were. So it's very safe. Now, there's a series of drills that are three, two, Good, one, six, and one. Okay, we start with three. Okay, three is we got to pretend there. rope like a, a rope so works best. Yeah, the line of the dirt so works, but um, whatever. I'm going to show you to you, and you can pretend. Yeah. It. Okay. You, you can you make stop a line. if it was a slow runner. Okay, but it thinks about fast runner. Yes. Keep so going that way. Okay. Straight on the line. Okay. Ah, yep. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, you don't walk the line. Oh, you don't even right. touch do the again, line. Do it again, do it again. You're all right. You got cross, it. Cross, cross. Okay? All right, because and it's, it's at half speed. Yeah, I like that. I like less the way than you half speed. That hop, if you make it look lazy and boring, you're doing it right. Okay? Because it's a warm-up drill. All right. All right? And what we're, the logic is, like all drills, if we overcorrect it at half speed, uh, there you, go. you got a chance at full speed. Nice job, Got it. So it's a Last routine round. warm-up drill we always do all the time the for people in your situation. Got it. So I'm going to show you. One. You're going to do it without a ball. Okay. Okay. You want to get? Go ahead. You got it. 
like that. Do it again. You'll, you'll figure out when you start your arm. There's no wind-ups. Put your arms by your side. Because you're trying to figure out when to do your wind-up. You just go around. No, left, right, left. Need a drink? Hey, that yeah, one you have yeah. to do Go to drink nice water and come back. Yeah. The ball always dictates, right? You yeah. Now, okay, you cross on the third one. You went cross, cross. think the third step is something special. Meaning a lot of people think, oh this is a real one I'm gonna fish and they go well. No, it's just like, you know, baby step, baby step. You don't have to put the ball in the glove, and then, you know you don't have to just. You don't have to go flat long in the third one, but it was good. Sometimes it's hard to calm yourself down. Lazy, lazy. Yeah. So that's already better because if you can go lazy three-step scissor walks and you're crossing, but when in real stride you're going this way, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because the pitcher has the pattern of warm up where they overtrack the power line to warm up, so therefore it's great when you go hard. I know, and it's so simple, but if you see anybody throw overhand, it's been done for 100 years. If you see a baseball pitcher throw overhand and, and they just, like, um, you know, just casually he's throwing, right? Mm -hmm. And you stand behind them, they don't go like this. They're all like, hey. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna yeah, your butter's going to get the bread. That makes sense? Yeah, right. Now, when, so they go here, here, right? No one's over there. Right. And when they go harder, they go straighter. Yeah, but you don't see them like, hey. Right. Right. And then all of a sudden you go straight yeah, because nobody do that. Softball pitchers do it all the time. And teachers teach it all the time. Right. Right. Oh, I let them warm up to the left side of the power line, and when we work on it, when they go hard, yeah, we're never, they're never going to get it. Right. right, because a week later, you work on the same thing. A week later, you left the power line. And you do the power line drills in a lesson. Oh, good for you. And a week later, you're left of it. I'm not saying you, I'm saying a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, you go to a lesson, you stand on a balance beam, which isn't worth a damn, okay? All of a sudden, because it corrects you, all right, and a week later you're to the left again, right? Because the pitcher has never been programmed to overcorrect that and come back. He knew all the toys, balance beams, lines of the mat, which do not work because I tried them all. Okay, all right. Um, and and it, it, so they make the pitcher straight all the time, which you can't do. Right, short strides are over, medium strides are left over. Left over, sorry. And long strides are on the line or slow. Right, but you overcorrect, you come back. That makes sense, right? And then when you go full, you got a chance. Mm -hmm. That's why people shouldn't warm up on balance beams. That never works. And I tried it because when they warm up on the balance beam, they go straight. And when they go harder, everyone goes to more to the left. Here, if we go here and warm up and we go harder, and we go more to the left, we're okay, because we're straight. That makes sense? Yeah. Yep. I know, it's simple logic. Mm-hmm, there's no recovery, there's no time to work on what you cannot do. Right. And I get sick of giving lessons. I've been lessons for 30 years. Oh, I got a tournament this weekend. It's like November. Nobody cares. You know what I mean? But they, you care. The student cares. They think it's the World Series. <laughs> the, the parents think it's the World Series. Eh, whatever. Right? So, we, and then Pete, we always talk about this when we recruit. Okay? 
recruit nationwide, we're seeing mad drop off. Okay. Because um, Chelsea Thomas, oh, yeah. Pitcher of Ross, yeah, over 70. Kalani Ricketts, over 70. Pej Lari, over 70. Blah, 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 blah. I worked with two of them. Two of them never made a game of travel ball in their life. Yes, high school, and lifted weights, and work on what they can do. Oh, bingo, USA team. Oh, okay. Right. Because, and I'm being a smart ass here, but if you play your round, and it's just, it's not your guys' fault, I tell this coach, job a team coaches. They're great because they put this stuff on. You know what I mean? Time and all that. Yeah, great. And it's a certain people you have to Right, right. Because if they play year round, you never work out what you're going to do. And there's a, a definite. Um, studies have been done. Pitchers who pitch eight months a year or more are more likely to get All right, so you know I'm playing left field. So our college pitchers, we're first year here. But you experience is more spring. Okay, they, you know, fall, winter break program. We're going to give her pitching all summer. You know what we do at the end of the season and the year meetings? Don't pitch. Three or four months off. Oh, okay. You're gonna come. You're gonna get him. Oh, yeah. oh. Right. So we have success in Missouri, Kansas State. Go barbecue. Yeah, because you're gonna get burnt out. Got him. And if you do like only softball and you don't play other sports, that's you know that's fair too. But there's certain months of the year you gotta take. Take a minimum. Yeah. Uh -huh. At eight. Yeah. Then, um, but if you do that, then your off season, you work on what you can do. Yeah, and you get better, and then you get better. Good, nice. Right. But these eight pitches, you know, that they throw, and if you get a hundred emails like that. Those are the kids who have the least amount of money. Are the kids who say, I feel the most. Yeah. Because they think every little nuance is a different pitch. Gotcha. Right. Well, sir, so, he, right. He made the mm -hmm. comment that if you're throwing the rise ball when you throw the curveball on it, you stick with the rise ball. Right. Because you can, and what I said here, you can. Whatever, work on a rise and go to curve later. And it's, if I if I see a student and, has, and they have a great rise, I can teach them a curveball five minutes. If they have a great curveball for five years, I can't teach them a rise ball five minutes. So if you go more vertical and then you want to lay it down, that's a piece of cake. If you go all the time horizontal and then you want to stand it up, uh uh, there's a problem. And there's some girls that throw, oh, I just throw a screwball, but sometimes it rises. I'm just telling you, you want to throw a lot. Oh, yeah. Good job. See you in a few weeks or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, and then, but they, they don't realize that pitches are the fa same family. I don't keep my English, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yep. So you stand the ball up and you lay it down, you stand it up and you lay it down, and in between, and when you're really good at it, okay, you've got more direction and movement, less names. And that's numbers. Who cares? Who cares? You know what I mean? But you got more movement. Right. And that's why I'm saying when we get these screen emails, oh, I throw this, 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 this. Oh, yeah. you, you're going to see straight balls. Straight balls straight. Yeah. And you see the kid, oh, I throw a good rise and good change up and whatever. And you're going to see a rise ball and change up. Yeah. Because the, the thing is, the people name every variation, every nuance. Yeah. You don't name new ones, but in travel ball they do. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They name everything under the sun and give it a number, and then oh that's cool. No, it's not cool. It's just like like um the uh, screw ball yeah. at a high level. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's a misfit. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna tell you that on TV. Okay. A world class pitcher like Kados and Mount Abbott. Those are rise ball high, middle, low, and they all the perfect spin. 
Those pitchers who throw a rise ball lower and inside and can't spin it right, they spin it like a bullet, it's a bad low rise. In travel ball and college ball, they gave it a name. You know what that name is? Uh-huh. And you throw Cat Osman, how to shoot a screwball, I shoot it. No, I, I can pitch, I don't do that. Because I can throw a low rise that spins the proper way. Because you know how a high rise is easier to throw than a low rise for everybody. So whenever you right hand, yeah. So when you go lower, it's hard to get you to come back up. Well, that's everybody. So sometimes when you go lower, that spins in a circle. Okay, it's it's a broken rise ball. You fix it. You don't give it a name. Starting eight years ago in treble ball, they gave it a name. Oh, I can't throw a low rise inside, so I thought of a screwball. No, it's a bad low rise. So an accomplished pitcher would realize that a low rise inside is just a bad low rise. Now, you can't tell that to 10 year olds because they go, but it's really a low rise that's it's focused. Yeah. Don't give it a name, fix it. Right, and I'm, I'm not yelling at you, I'm yelling at the whole country. You know what I mean? You travel ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, you realize it's spinning like this. It's screwing. That's cool. No, it's not. Don't name it and accept it. Fix it. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Oh, oh man. But you know, you know, oh, yeah, we got, hey, number on brand. Hey, no number. You know what I mean? We got a screwball. We got this. And we got this. And we got all oh, God. You know, instead of being able to spin the ball and move it, they name pitches and not working on movement, which is two completely different things, but people don't get that. They think naming pitches and the amounts of grips and amounts of numbers, you're working on movement. No, you're not. But they think of that. That makes sense to you? Yeah. 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 It's, it's so common sense, but people get lost in it because all the pitch calling and arm bands and this and that. And this. Oh, yeah, I left the arm bands all the time. We see these kids, and they're pretty good in the travel wall. They throw a straight fastball all the time. Straight, straight, straight. You know what I mean? And the coach is like, yeah, 532. Come on. She's 14. She's throwing the same pitch whole game. You call her nothing. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that pitch is pretty good, you know? But they think they're calling pitches. They're just yelling our three numbers. And everybody's like, it's the same pitch. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because they think more pitches is more movement and they're and not right at all. More movement is more movement. More names is just more names. Yeah. That's why you, you work on rise and you try to spin it up, spin it on an angle, spin it up, spin it on an angle. When you get that good with it, you can do variations of rise, which gives you a curve ball, and it gives you a curve rise ball. But it's just really it's your good rise and your playing with playing with. And at the end, you had a better rise and better curve by way of not naming them, just a rise ball that's really good that you can manipulate. Yeah. And that's what good pitchers do. So, that makes sense?